the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen? Amen? I'm just so glad to be here. God is just truly amazing. God is just truly amazing, and I am just so glad uh, to be here on today, and I'm glad to see you. Truly want to give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, thank God for this opportunity as always. Amen. I want to thank Pastor as always. Amen. I want to thank you all for being here. Amen? Amen. 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 If it had not been for him, we wouldn't be here. Amen? Amen. None of us would be here. So we are grateful uh, to God for his presence. Um, before I uh, get into what the Holy Spirit has given to me, I want to just share with you briefly uh, what I've wrestled with for the past three weeks. Amen. Uh, for the past three weeks, Pastor, um, you know, usually those of you that know me really well, you know that when I prepare, when the Lord is preparing me to preach, it's done within a month's time, maybe a month and a half. Uh, before it's time, it's done. Well, this time, it didn't come. It did not come. Now, I knew I had just gotten back from Italy. Well, Lord, I didn't leave you in Italy. I brought you back with me. My Lord. But the word did not come to me, First Lady, and I was trying to figure out what in the world was wrong. And so about three weeks ago, maybe shortly after we got back from Italy, I started seeing numbers. I started seeing numbers. I started seeing one, two, two, one. I started seeing those numbers and I was trying to figure out where those numbers were coming from and why every time I went to work or got in my car or did something, I would see these numbers. One, two, two, one. Now, mind you, I'm trying to figure out the code. I, I don't know if you all remember, um, probably been about a year ago, and I know um, Sister uh, Betty Cup take notes religiously every time I preach, but it's probably been about a year ago, maybe a year and a half, that I preached a sermon and I talked about a guy who um, could distinguish Morris Cole. You all remember that? Some of you may remember that, that he understood what the cold meant, and that's how he was able to get in to get the job. So that's how I felt. I felt like I, I, I was beginning to hear some type of cold, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. And I kept saying, okay, Lord, please show me what it is that you're trying to, trying to show me. Holy Spirit, show me what it is. So I had to really get in a quiet place so I could really hear. Because y'all know we get distracted. Amen. We get distracted. We get distracted by stuff that we see, stuff that we don't see. Even when people tell you things, it's still a distraction. Amen. And so I started getting distracted, and I kept saying, Lord, I need... To, to know what, what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying to me. And so I kept saying the one, the two, and then the two and the one. And then probably two weeks after that, something came to me and said, no, you're putting the one and the two together. You got to separate them. So then I started saying one, two, two, one. Okay, so I still don't know what that means. I'm still at a loss, Lord. I still don't know what you're trying to say to me. So Immediately, I started going to the word. I started going to the scripture. Then I started seeing something that said enemy. Oh, enemy. And I said, okay, so one, two, two, one has something to do with enemy. Has something to do with enemy. The word enemy. So, Lord, what, what are you trying to say? So, I started going to the word. I started reading uh, in the New Testament. Um, I went to chapter 12 because I figured it was something with chapter 12. I'm saying one, two, and then a two and a one. So I went to chapter 12 of, of, of different books in the Bible. I still didn't get it. I said, well, Lord, when, when you are ready for me to receive this, then you will show me Amen. exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. So now I want you all to go to Romans with me because this is where it came from. My Lord. Go to the book of Romans with me, chapter 12. Go to Romans chapter 12, and this is what it was. Because when, it, when, when I read this, this is what I jumped up, and this is what the Holy Spirit gave me. Romans 12, and I want you to look at verse 21. Romans 12 and 21. Now, I'm going to be reading Romans 12 and 12, 17 through 21, but I want you to just look at what 21 says. So this is what the Holy Spirit was saying. 12, 21. So if you're able to stand at this time, let's stand while I read what the word says. Amen? Amen. Romans 12, verses 17 through 21. 
And it reads, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live what? Peaceably among all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy, that enemy, enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in, in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Amen. Look at verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Amen. You may be seated. The topic that the Holy Spirit has given to me is, oh, yes, we can defeat the enemy. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. You may not think that you can, but oh, yes, you can defeat the enemy. Amen. Do you remember growing up in your uh, various communities and the things that you used to do growing up? Well, I remember uh, one of my one of my neighbors in 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 our neighborhood. She was uh, very good friends with with my sister with with Wanda, and uh, we were going to school one day, and uh, she was being bullied in school. Okay. Uh, even back then, kids were being bullied. Amen. And and, and so she was being bullied in school. Amen. And, 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 and I had a lot of influence back then. I had a lot of influence back then because Wanda is four years younger than me, okay? I had a lot of influence back then, but sometimes it may not have always been good influence, okay? It may not have always been positive influence, amen? But I had influence back then, amen? But, 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 but here we are, we premeditated meeting up and following this girl home from school one day. <laughs> Y'all know what happened. All right, now. We premeditated following her home from school one day, and I can just hear the Lord saying, now, vengeance is mine. My Lord. Vengeance is mine, okay? So after school that day, the bully crossed a busy intersection. Now, mind you, where we lived in, in, in South Carolina, we didn't have to cross the intersection. So we could just walk down what, what, what we would say back then, walk down the road. We could just walk down the road, and we would be home, okay? But this particular day, we changed our route. Okay, we followed them, we followed her home from school that day, all right? And so, as we got closer to the intersection, we noticed that she was already across the street. She was already across the street. Well, uh, one day I needed to get across the street. So by the time we got to the intersection, she was just about gone, okay? So, uh, when, 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 when Wanda's friend crossed the intersection, First Lady, she got hit by a car. My Lord. Just so happened Wanda and I were not at that point with her yet. So she got hit by a car. Now she's lying there in the middle of the street, blood coming from head, face. Wanda and I are just screaming to the top of our lungs. And I looked over at the young lady that we were running behind, and she gave me the smirk, and she kept right on walking as if nothing happened. As if nothing happened. So, 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 what would have happened if she had come back to the scene of that accident? What would have happened if she had just tried to help us? How would this have changed the whole outlook of this situation? My sister's friend was okay, but she suffered a major concussion that day. And was out of school for a few weeks. But 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 that premeditated gesture that changed my life forever. That changed my life forever. Amen? Amen. We can all think about childhood woes that's going on in our lives. We can think about things that we've experienced, but none is more serious and traumatic than taking matters in your own hand. Amen. And that's what we did. And look at what happened. We took matters in our own hand, amen? We can defeat the enemy in so many more ways than this right here. We can defeat the enemy so much more, amen? The enemy has all kind of ways to take us down. And not only to take us down, but to keep us down. And then, and then, and then not only to keep us down, but to try to defeat us while we are ready down, amen? But I heard the Bible say that no weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper. 
No weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper. Why? Because I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Amen? We have to become bold soldiers. We have to become aggressive in quoting mantras. We have to do this every single day. Amen? If we don't yield to his way of thinking, then God can use the best of us. He can also use the worst of us to share the word of God. Amen? He can use the best and he can use the worst. The word of God tells us to resist the devil. And if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Amen? Amen? In other words, we don't have to give in to the strategies of the enemy. That's right. We don't have to give in to the strategies of the enemy. Amen? Just do what's right in Christ. Amen? Amen. We all know what's right. We just need to do what's right in Christ. Amen? Amen. In our text today, we see that Paul has moved from a doctrinal side of ministry teaching to now a practical side. So here in our text now, we're seeing how he has moved from doctrinal to practical. Amen? Amen? To the Roman church. He's saying that because we are all the body of Christ, there are certain ways that the body needs to operate. There are certain ways that the body needs to operate. Like a body, we all have unique and different functions. What would the church be like if everybody just came up here with the praise team and just sung? My Lord. What would the church be like if everybody just ushered? Well, who, who, who needs to sit down? All right now. If everybody's ushering, amen? amen? But we all have different functions. We all, we all are individual people, and we all have different things that we do to make the church operate, amen? amen. It's only when we as individuals learn to do our part that the church become healthier. Uh -huh. It's only when we do our part. I can't do your part, and you can't do my part, amen? amen. I don't know if I can handle being an usher, because I'm going to make you move over. I'm not going to let nobody go in front of you. <laughs> and a lot of ushers have patience like that, amen? Y'all know sometimes when we go to church, we have special places to sit. My mama is religious for that. Don't sit in my seat. <laughs> I need to get to church early enough so nobody will sit in my seat. <laughs> amen? Amen. And y'all know that's how we get sometimes, amen? But the church can operate better if we all can do our part, amen? amen. So, 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 so not only should our intentions be pure, but our obligations to each other and the church should change our attitudes toward one another. While at the same time, we need to bring shame to the enemy. Amen. We need to bring shame to the devil. Amen. amen. This is how you defeat the enemy. Amen. amen. This is what you do. Amen. So, 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 so now let's look at the text to see what practical points Paul is sharing in this epistle to the Roman church. Amen. amen. Please look with me at the text. There are five verses here, but, but there are eight ways that the Lord has given to me to share with you as it pertains to this text of ways that we can defeat the enemy. Amen? Amen. Ways that we can defeat the enemy. Amen? Faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So let's look at verse 17 again. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Amen. Look at verse 17. Paul is, 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 is saying to the Romans, we can talk all day and all night about our obligations to each other. But what we ought to be doing is changing our attitudes toward one another. How many of y'all can truly say without a shadow of a doubt that you love everybody? Amen. That you love everybody. Amen. Regardless of what they do to you. Regardless of how they treat you, amen? In other words, just because someone is doing evil to you, it doesn't mean that you need to do evil to them, amen? amen. It doesn't mean that you need to do evil to them, amen? Guess what? You have to practice not doing evil. Amen. Amen? You have amen. to practice not doing evil toward someone else, amen? So the first way to defeat the enemy, the first way to defeat the enemy is don't get even. Amen. Because now you're causing some problems. All right, now. Don't get even, amen? You all remember the saying, and y'all can help me finish it. I don't get mad, I get even. I get even. 
And we've seen it before. We've seen the slogan before. We've seen it on, on, on different things before. Amen. But this is an example of what Paul is saying here that we are not supposed to do. Amen. amen. I want to share a story with you about, 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 about a truck driver who always stopped at this particular uh, uh, diner en route to drop off his load. So, 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 so this particular night, the truck driver ordered his meal like he normally would do, and he sat down to eat his meal. And three motorcycle riders, looking like hell's angels, came in and they shoved him. The first thing they did was shove him. Then after they shoved him, one took his loaded cheeseburger, one reached his hand, in his french fries and took a handful of his fries and the other took his coffee so 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 the truck driver just got up look at what he did he just got up he went to the counter he paid for his meal and he left the diner the waitress ran after him to give him his change but the truck driver was already gone when the waitress came back to the diner, one of the truck drivers said, huh, he's not much of a man, is he? So the waitress looked at them and said, he's not much of a driver either, because he just ran over three motorcycles in the parking lot. All right now. How you like me now? Okay. How you like me now, amen? So this is what Paul is saying not to do, amen? Don't get even, but I'm sure he felt good. I'm sure he felt good about getting even, amen? The second way to defeat the enemy is to always have a good reputation. Amen. Always have a good reputation, amen? And we've all done things, amen? We've all done things. Sometimes we, as the body of Christ, thrive on what others feel and think about us. Amen. When we should be more concerned with the way Christ feels about us. Amen? Amen. Some of us are concerned with the way others feel. Amen? Amen? How are you trying to tell me what's right when you're not doing what's right? Amen. How are you trying to say to me what's, 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 what's right to say when I'm hearing you say other things? that are not in order. Amen? Amen? Guess what? Someone's always watching you. Amen. Always. We just had a conversation just now doing fellowship. Someone's always watching you. Uh -huh. They're always watching me. Amen? Amen? I said it before and I'll say it again. You don't know the cost of my oil. Amen. You don't know the cost of my oil. You don't know the cost of my praise. Amen. You don't know the price of the oil in my alabaster box. So guess what? I'm going to praise him at all times. Amen? Amen. I can't speak for you, but I'm going to give him the glory at all times. Amen? Amen. In and out of season. Amen? Amen. At any time and anywhere. Amen? Amen? There are visible times in our lives that if you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, others need to see you walking upright. Others need to see you walking upright, amen, in the Lord, amen. The Bible tells us in Matthew 5 and 16, and we can all quote this ourselves, let your light so what? Shine before men, yeah. so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven, amen? amen. Paul is saying that a good reputation is very important in the body of Christ, amen? amen. And in the church, amen? amen. Even Solomon even Solomon, who had it all, who had it all, said in Proverbs 22 and 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Amen? Amen. He realized the importance of having a good reputation. Amen? Amen? And in the end, it's all worth it to have a good reputation. Amen? In other words, it's great to love people. But we should be living to love the Lord. Amen? Amen? We should be living to love the Lord. Amen? Amen? Look with me at the next verse. Let's go to verse 18 in the text. Amen? Verse 18 says that if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably among all people. Amen? Amen? Among all. Amen? In other words, be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Amen? Amen. Do things in a way that everybody can see. 
that you are honorable. Everybody can see that you're a noble, Christian-hearted person. And as much as lie within you, be harmonious to people. Be pleasant to people. Be peaceful with other people. Amen? So, 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 so now the third way to defeat the enemy is to do your part in sharing peace. Do your part in sharing peace. Amen? Amen. Do your part in sharing peace. Let's just be honest with life for just a few minutes. Amen? Amen. There are people that will not like you. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say, how you act. They're just not going to like you. You're not going to have peace with everybody. But you don't need to be the one out there causing discourse. Just because somebody don't like you, you don't need to be the one out there disturbing the peace. You don't need to be the one out there keeping the war at bay. That doesn't need to be your job. Amen? This is not the plight of a true believer of Christ. So as much as lie within you, you can't concern yourself with the concerns. My Lord. You can't concern yourself with the concerns, amen? Live peaceably. Take the rest to the Lord and leave it there, amen? He said that my yoke is easy yeah. and my burden is light, amen? Yeah, you, know, amen. you know, some people are only in your life to support your pain. Some people are only there to support your pain. And y'all probably know who they are. They're only in your life to support your pain. Why? Because misery loves company. Misery loves company. Amen? So the fourth way to defeat the enemy is to always know the limitations around you. Yeah. Always know the limitations around you, amen? amen? We live in a country where there's free speech, but you can't just say anything and everything that you want to say. All right now. Amen. I believe that's why we don't do testimonial services like we used to. Because people get up, my little toe hurt. I broke my fa I broke my little pinky uh, a toenail. Really? Y'all remember back in the day when we would have testimonial service, people would shout yeah. off a of testimony. Yeah. They will shout off of a testimony, amen? But we just can't say anything that we want to say, amen? amen? We don't need to do anything to just keep peace. You don't need to do anything to just keep peace. There are ways to say things to let people know that you do mean business, amen? amen. There's a way to tell people that you mean business and that you are serious about what you believe in. And what you are passionate about, amen? There's a way to do it, amen? Here in our text, Acts chapter 7, verse 51, Stephen here in the text, he is standing in front of the Sanhedrin Council on trial. Now, 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 if you want to go there, you can go there, but I want you to listen to what Stephen is saying. Stephen was standing trial before the Sanhedrin Council, and this is what he said. Ye stiff neck. And uncircumcised All right now. in heart and ears, mm. ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. Amen? Amen. Sometimes you have to let people know what thus saith the Lord. That's right. yeah. You think about people who come to your door, and I'm not going to call any religious names, but think about people who come to your door who's trying to get you to be a part of their religion. All right. You have to be serious mm -hmm. All right. and share with oh, people. Yeah. What thus saith the Lord, if you are really a child of God. Amen? Amen. These words may not sound peaceably, but they are truth. Yes. And this is what Paul here is saying to the Roman church. Amen? Amen? Just live peaceable and the Lord will set everything else in order when he returns. That's right. He'll set everything else in order. Amen? Amen. So, 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 so go with me to the text. And let's look at verse, let's, 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 let's look at verse number 19. In the text, amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay. That's, right. That's important. I'll repay, not you. Mm -hmm. I will repay, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, amen? amen? In other words, what Paul is saying here in the text, don't take your personal vengeance out on another, but rather give place to the Lord. Amen. 
Amen. Give place to the Lord here. Amen. So, 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 so the fifth way to defeat the enemy. Oh, yes, we can. The fifth way to defeat the enemy is to know that revenge can lead to problems. Oh, yeah. Mm. Revenge can lead to problems. Amen. Yeah. In other words, when you react or act quickly on anything, it can return to bite you. Yeah. Right. It can return to bite you. Amen. Yeah. None of us want a reputation of being a hothead. Not one of us want a reputation of being a hothead when we're thinking ahead of ourselves. Amen. And, 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 and we've seen this happen, amen? Yeah. We've seen this happen. My mother shared a story with me um, not long ago, and, and sometimes I call mama um, Google mom because she can tell me everything that happened on the news. I don't even have to watch the news. <laughs> she can tell me everything that happens because most of the time their news is very similar to ours, so she can tell me just about everything. So she shared a story with me about um, a family who was having a cookout, and and, and 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 I'm not sure where this happened, but but there were cousins in a, in a bedroom, and they were playing. What's that game that y'all like to play, young people? Uh, Fortnite or something? Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. yeah, Fortnite. Fortnite. Yeah, so they were in the bedroom playing Fortnite, and and um and and, and the other part of the family, uh, they were just enjoying themselves, fellowshipping, eating, talking, laughing, having a good time. All of a sudden, the two in the back started arguing. Because one was beating the other. One cousin was beating the other cousin in the game. How about he took a gun out and shot and killed his cousin? He shot him three times. Three times. React them before you think. And look at what happened. So now the families are in court. The families that were sitting together, enjoying each other, fellowshipping together, now they're grinders. Okay? See what happens when you do things out of order. And in our world, y'all, we're seeing this happen. We're seeing people do things out of order. Amen? amen. We don't want to be hotheads. We don't want to be known as that. Amen? amen? I read a story not long ago about, about a tenant farmer who had worked for many, many years to cultivate the land of this particular farmer. And then something happened in the midst. Something happened that the tenant farmer became bitter. When it came time to renew the lease, the owner told the tenant, I won't be needing your services anymore. Amen. I won't be needing your services anymore. Thank you very much. We appreciate your generosity and all that you have done. I'm selling the property to my son who's getting married. So thank you. Thank you. Year after year, he cultivated this land. Year after year. Thank you for your services. The tenant did all that he could to buy this land. He did all that he could to get his lease renewed. But to no avail, right. nothing worked. Right. Nothing worked, nothing happened. As time got closer for the tenant to move out, he went outside. He gathered all of the annoying weeds that he could find and other pesky seeds. And he spread them all over that fertilized yard. Look, 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 at, look at the enemy here. He spread them all over that fertilized yard. And he scattered them all over the farmyard. He found trash. He found stones. Anything that he could find to degrade that farmer. That's what he did. Amen? Amen. The next morning, the owner came to the tenant and said to him, Plans for my son's wedding has fallen through. I will be more than happy to renew your lease. The farmer couldn't understand why the tenant would respond, Oh Lord, what a fool I've been. Have mercy. Look at what happens when we respond. Oh, All right now. Sometimes, y'all, we just have to walk away. Yeah. I don't care if they talk about you. Yeah. Sometimes we just have to walk away from the situation. That's right, that's right. Sometimes that's what we have to do. Amen. We've all had things of this sort to happen to us. This is why we have to be cautious and careful about being so high-headed. Amen? Lord. We need to be led by the spirit and not by the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So often our flesh get in the way, y'all. We see it all the time. Yes. Amen. We see it all the time. The flesh gets in the way because I want to be a bigger person. Mm -hmm. I want you to like me yes. because of what I did. My Lord. 
The flesh get in the way. So, 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 so the sixth way to defeat the enemy is to know that vengeance is the job of God and not yours. My Lord. Yeah. 